whether or not SIs like Origin, CyberPower, and IYPower interest you as a DIY builder, this review should have some pretty interesting data for you. We did extensive thermal analysis on this small form factor enclosure. You can see the GPU is pretty tight in there, but it's got a ventilation port and it's using a blower fan. So interesting test to look at. So we have extensive data that may be interesting whether or not you're gonna buy one of these things. Now this is an Origin Kronos. I think it's the VR edition, though they also have a non-VR edition. And it's basically, it's a small form factor box. I think this is a custom case. I do not know who the OEM is, but I couldn't find it on Newegg. So it is a custom case. It is uh, similar in some ways to Iowa Power Revolt 2, the uh, Iowa Power's Revolt 2 they made. And that's only because it's also a small form factor box. They've each got their own kind of flair. This one has red LEDs around the window, whatever. It's just, it's a box, right? But it's a small box, so that makes thermals pretty interesting. With this thing, I think this is a $2,300, $2,392 unit, counting the LEDs, the GTX 1080, the i7-6700K, and a few other components, and we'll do a price analysis later. Before getting to our call audits, where I audit the tech support and the sales teams posing as an incompetent customer, let's talk about thermals, then we'll go to noise, power, FPS, and all that other stuff, and see if this thing's actually any good, uh, even if you're a DIY builder. So thermals first, these numbers are presented as a delta T value. That means we subtract out the ambient temperature. We have a video on this that you can check on the channel. It was posted just before this one. Add in your local temperature to get the full temperature value. The Kronos runs pretty hot. The result of a small form factor box with overclocked components is that it will run hot. And this one hits 74.6 delta T over ambient. That's in Celsius for the CPU cores. And that means we're regularly hitting 100C on a few of the CPU cores if you factor in ambient, and that causes the CPU to throttle back upon hitting TJ Maxx. The same issue happens with the GTX 1080 FE, which is hitting 62.58 Celsius peak average, and that's in the range of 88 to 90, 91 Celsius when accounting for ambient. In an open air bench without the inherent restrictions of an ITX box, we saw peak temperatures around 82C with a throttle point uh, for the GTX 1080 FE at that temperature. Just maintaining these temperatures of 74.6C delta T for the CPU and the 62.58C for the GPU, just maintaining those requires the VRM fan to run at 100%. And we auto configured the GPU fan to 55% for some tests, which are shown on the screen now. And the reason I did that is to get a direct apples to apples comparison of how well this box performs without the window versus with the window. And so we actually see a somewhat uh, different performance output. We're getting about five Celsius better when removing the acrylic window, which creates somewhat of a, a basically a diathermic wall, I guess is one way to say it. And our suggestion to origin based on this data would be to just drill a few holes in this thing. Uh, they don't, it doesn't even have to be a mesh, just a couple of small holes. It won't look quite as pretty, but if you get a couple degrees out of it, that's actually a big deal, and I'll tell you why. For our short-term tests, the GPU spikes in frequency erratically over the test period as a result of thermal fluctuations. This means that the 1080 is functioning as designed, and it's using Boost 3.0 to bounce the clock rate as a means to reduce or control temperature, and we'll use crossbars to highlight these spikes. Note that around the 600 second mark, the temperature is hitting a range of 90 Celsius for the non-delta value, or about 65C delta, and compare that to harsh sudden drops of frequency where we fall to nearly 1600 megahertz, we see that the temperature spike lines up with the frequency spike, and the reduced clock is the only way the GPU can stay within its spec. This results in heavy impact to frame rate at times, and as the clock rate was initially 1960 to 2000 megahertz. Uh, it, over the course of testing, fell to 1600 megahertz, and we do see that reflected in frame rates and sometimes frame times during the spikes. But this can be partially resolved. We ran a two hour endurance test using a different game, Metro Last Light, to see how it responds to 1440p with complete max settings in Metro Last Light. And it's a little bit less intensive on the clock rate, not quite as clock biased. And the test was conducted with the pre-configured overclock 
and auto fan speed settings. In this test, the first chart shows GPU temperature versus frequency versus time. Notice that the frequency is more stable here than in the previous test that we showed. We still can't maintain the 2000 megahertz clock rate, but we're able to sit at about 1900 megahertz. And the temperature is represented as a non-delta value this time. So what you're seeing is the actual GPU diode temperature with ambient added. We're at 90 C here. And the only way to achieve the thermal and oscillation clock oscillation stability is to allow the fan to auto boost up to 100% speed or 4000 RPM. That obviously impacts noise. So let's look at the noise data next. This chart shows our noise testing. We subtract out ambient noise floor by using a logarithmic formula for computing the deltas between decibel values as they can't be simply subtracted. For reference, the GTX 1080 FE on our open air bench is present. Origins Kronos runs at a pretty steady hum with its idle noise level at about 52.9 dB using the pre-configured BIOS smart fan and auto GPU fan settings. For comparison, the open air test bench with a 1080 FE idles about 37.5 dB but that is using an X41 CLC and a Hale 90 PSU. These are the only fans in that test system, so they're a good deal quieter than something like an ITX box. A better comparison, of course, would be ITX builds from other SIs, but we only just recently added DB testing, so I didn't do it back when we had the Revolt 2 because we didn't have DB testing methodology in place yet. Origins hitting about 58 dB under 100% RPM which is only slightly louder than the Open Air 1080 at 100% fan RPM. The two are more or less the same to the listener, but the big point here is that the 1080 FE will basically never hit 100% fan speeds when in an open air bench or in a, a sort of full tower case. The only reason it will go that high is if it can't sit steady at 82 Celsius with a 50-ish percent fan speed. This case, it can't do that, obviously, so it's pushing pretty hard up to 100% RPM, uh, which is 4,000, and then it's able to keep its 90 Celsius temperature a bit better. So it's a fairly loud idle noise level. The GPU fan does regulate itself idle at 1,100 RPM, but the CPU fan's pushing 2,000. Uh, it's one of those slim fans on, on basically a liquid cooler. It's a 120 millimeter liquid cooler. So it's, it's a little bit noisy idle but the full load temperature is what you would expect. It's just ideally you don't hit 100% RPM with the GPU fan under full load. So let's talk about power next. The system we have has a 450 watt SFX PSU from Corsair. It's actually a good power supply. And it, it does sound a bit crazy on the surface to put a 450 watt PSU with basically a flagship card like a 1080, but that's where the world is now with TDP. So technically, NVIDIA recommends a 500 watt power supply it's a bit of a safe recommendation unless you are putting the system under uh, a transcode 100% workload for the GPU and a 100% maybe uh, large for your transforms on the CPU. Unless you're doing that simultaneously, this 450 watt power supply availability is not going to be an issue. And that's not really a use case you'd have for almost any system anyway. So uh, the 450 watts is plenty. When we did the testing, I saw a power draw of 282.9 watts for full system power when running 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra at 4K looping using the combined test to hit both the CPU and the GPU pretty heavily. So that's fully within acceptable range. Uh, it's a bit over the 50% power draw mark. That's fine. This power supply is not going to be threatened it'll still live along in good life. So uh, I will commend Origin on not going overkill with the power supply. This is something a lot of the SIs really fail with. They'll send us, I think, Iowa Power did this in the past and I think CyberPower has as well. They'll send us a system with a 700 watt or 800 watt power supply and it's totally unnecessary. Uh, and it just pushes this idea that more watts equals better. But we all know that's not how performance works. So I am glad that in at least this one way, Origin's recommending a good amount of power and not going crazy overkill on it just to spike the price or use MDFs or whatever. All right, so frame rates are next. This is a very trivial test here. It's not like our GPU reviews. With frame rate testing for SI builds, you're gonna see the same performance you see with the review of the GTX 1080 other than the pre-overclock they've applied but we're still going to run through them anyway. Uh, so just if this is what to expect, if you want to play at 1440p or 480, this system for quick bursted FPS tests, 
shows a 145 FPS average for Black Ops 3 on high with tightly timed 1% and 0.1% lows. Doom with OpenGL 4.5 hits 121 FPS. With settings tweaks or Vulcan, you could hit 144 hertz. GTA 5 has worse 0.1% lows, but is hitting a 113 FPS average. And these charts don't tell us anything we don't already know. Obviously, 1080 can handle 1440p. The same is mostly true for 4K, which is represented on the screen now. The overclock is mostly beneficial, but we do see some stability tests and endurance runs resulting in heat buildup. And this does actually negate the overclock pretty much immediately and drops us down to the 1600 megahertz range. And that impacts frame rate over time if you were to look at such a metric. Now, build quality as a whole, this is one of the places Origin does pretty well in addition to the power supply selection. Component selection I mostly agreed with. I really wouldn't have made any major changes to the components. Now obviously this is this particular case is basically a matter of uh, pick the highest end thing and put it in there. So it's, it is kind of hard to do poorly with that. But the motherboard is a good one. It's an Asus uh, Z170 board. They didn't go crazy in that regard, but it's, it's not bad either. The, Assembly quality is good. The cable management is very clean in the main compartment. You don't see a lot of cables. Uh, one major point that I would really recommend Origin improve on is the PCIe riser cable. And I'm only mentioning this because it doesn't look good. The performance is going to be the same, but the PCIe riser cable they're using basically looks like it has duct tape on it. It's kind of a gray with, I think, green and black. Uh, so it's irrelevant to performance. You can't even see it through this window. So the average user is never going to know. But if someone does open it up and say uh, maybe they produce B-roll for a video, it just looks kind of bad. So it's one of those things that making it black isn't going to impact anything other than uh, people won't think it looks bad, which is important if you're trying to market a product. So that is a suggestion I would make, but it's kind of a moot suggestion in the face of performance metrics because it won't impact anything. Uh, the other thing with build quality, tubes, cables, that's done pretty well. The overclock was 4.6 gigahertz on the CPU. That's a pre-OC. The voltage, the V-Core was, uh, was maybe a little aggressive, but I, I would not feel bad about the V-Core. I, th I think it was one point, it's pushing like 1.3, something like that. Uh, it's, I, I don't feel bad about it, but um, not bad for something that's getting pushed out of a factory. The uh, GPU was hitting a frequency of 1961 megahertz, also not bad. Unfortunately, can't really sustain that because of the thermals, but it's a decent overclock overall. I believe they use EVGA Precision that's pre-installed. It auto boots with the startup, so everything's done for you, and that is something that they do well. PSU selection is good. They didn't go crazy with any of that stuff. Price is okay. If you went to Newegg or whatever and sort of picked this out yourself, uh, which I did, you'd be looking at about $1,818, $1,800 for the build DIY approach. That's assuming you can find an ITX case that's similar to this. I kind of just picked a, Ro a, or a Silverstone RVZ case. That's, I think, $70. So you'd be looking at about $1,800 to $1,900, and then obviously you build it yourself. This is $2,396, having the notes here in front of me now. That includes the $15 LED strip, so it's $23 something. Uh, that puts Origin at about $580 almost, more than DIY, and that makes them really a, uh, a premium over some of their competitors. iWebPower is about $100 to $200 more on average for most of their systems if you pick strictly part versus part. We're not changing the part selection here. CyberPower is about the same, $100 to $200 more, and that's really uh, not unreasonable if you don't want to build a computer pay someone 100 to 200 bucks to do it for you is not that bad of a deal. Now, obviously, folks who can do it themselves, do it yourself, whatever. So uh, it's, it's got a bit of a premium versus the competitors. That fits Origin's sort of boutique shop appearance. And their justification of this price is mostly 24-7 support, pre-overclocks, and a custom case. So the one that we can audit the best is the support. I called the support line, I audited, and so we called tech support twice. The first time, it is 24-7, so the first time I called at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, and I got no answer after 25 minutes, so I gave up. I called back during normal business hours during the sh just before the shoot at uh, 3.40 p.m. Eastern and got an answer in under five minutes from tech support, which I think is mostly acceptable. Uh, I, I think the way Origin could improve this would be a uh, a callback feature. So sometimes you'll call support and it's like, we have a 30 minute wait, do you want us to call back when we're ready for you? 
hit one and it just does it. Uh, I think they should do that for their after normal business hours support if it's going to take 30 minutes to get an answer. In terms of competence, I was pretty happy with the tech support. I acted like a complete noob to hardware. Uh, totally, I told them I didn't know anything about the computer. I didn't know what video card was in it. All I know is I bought it like a year ago and I said... I installed a program that said it's running at like 90 Celsius and I wanted to see if that was okay. Uh, and he said... 90 Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit? 90 Celsius. Uh, no. Is this a notebook or a desktop? No. <laughs> Which is correct. He said no. Uh, you should check for software that's changing the fan RPM. You should check uh, ventilation, dust, all the normal suggestions. So I completely agree with all the suggestions made. Those are the ones I would have made myself, troubleshooting with someone who doesn't know what they own. And I think they've done well in that regard. I also called sales support. I got an answer in about a minute. Sales is always that way, isn't it? Because they want to sell you something. And uh, sales support, I basically said, I'm on your site, I don't know what I should buy. I have a 1080p monitor, I'm playing GTA 5 and Mirror's Edge at high settings. What's a good video card for me to own? And I was expecting them to say buy a 1080 because it's the most expensive and they've got an idiot on their hands, me, uh, who clearly doesn't know any better. They didn't. They said, uh, he actually directly said, I'm not going to push you to the 1080, I think it's too expensive for what you're doing. Uh, the 1070 makes more sense for you. and I more or less agreed with that based on the kind of price range I gave him. I also asked him, should I get eight gigabytes of RAM or 16? He said, you don't need 16 gigabytes for just gaming and watching streams. You'll probably use six to seven gigabytes during those tasks simultaneously, but you'll be fine. And I agree with that as well. That's data I've seen. Uh, so their support is clearly competent, which is not always the case for SIs. So well done origin there. All right, so overall, uh, this needs some work with thermals. It, seriously, it does. That is the main problem with this. I am pretty happy with the overall build quality and parts selection, uh, other than that PCIe riser thing, which really is basically irrelevant. I'm happy with the support line for the most part, and I think that uh, really the fault is in thermals. Noise idles a bit loud, but if you fix thermals, you fix, fix the noise, because if it's running at 100% fan RPM when this thing's under gaming load, uh, that's obviously going to be loud. <laughs> and it's running at a high CPU RPM um, idle just because it's a small kind of hot box. And there's another, there's a fan back here as well, I believe, which doesn't help things. So they need to work on thermals. Uh, the system as a whole is okay. It's acceptable. Uh, the closest competition is sort of the Revolt 2, which is a, a wider form factor and is flashier. So if you don't want that in your living room or something, I guess you'd be looking at something like this, but this is going to be a louder box. So I wouldn't really recommend it necessarily for HTPC. It would be okay if you're using it as an on-the-go LAN computer or as a system in your main gaming room where you're gonna put headphones on, you won't hear the noise. It's not that crazy loud, so don't let this get blown out of proportion, but uh, it, it is loud enough where in a living room home theater environment, I would not want it. Uh, so thermals, that's the, the only real issue. See if I have any other notes here. Uh, not really, support was good. Uh, build quality is decent. Price is a bit high, but not terrible, considering kind of Origins attempting to position themselves as a boutique shop rather than a factory that just pumps out systems like some of their competitors. So uh, overall, not bad. That needs work, uh, but okay overall. I, I think the support's good. If you buy something like a mid-tower from them, it'd be much better, obviously. So that's the review. Full disclosure, Origin sponsored us during the AMD RX 480 release. I want to put that out there. This was the sponsor. Quite obviously, uh, we don't let sponsorship interfere with editorial quality or integrity or ethics. And that's really, a, I just want to put that out there because it's important. So uh, yeah, Patreon link to post the video if you want to help us out directly. Subscribe as always for more content. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.